ready to go. We've got an extra pair of hands because uh, Copper Cop recommends that three people do it. Two rolling, one mixing. So we've got a friend coming and he's done these before, so he's, he's cool. It's very reassuring to have someone that's already used this product before. And yeah, hole has been degreased, wiped, and wiped again <laughs> with alcohol, which is what they recommend as well. And we are ready to go. It's pretty early in the morning, and this is supposed to take us the whole day. I'm sweating already because I've been wiping. Okay, good. They look like two scientists. <laughs> scientists. <laughs> this is Sylvain. <laughs> Hello. Our French crew for the day. Mm. Uh, normally I do it with, uh, like an omelette. With a drill. Egg. Ah, yeah? Yeah. But it looks uh, pretty like, easy to mix, actually. Yeah. So, for the moment it's easy to mix, but uh, once you add uh, the copper, okay. it's a little bit more tricky. tricky. Ooh. Oh, it's so cool. Just uh, be careful, don't... Uh, breathe it. Don't breathe it. <laughs> I weigh those bags of copper, over two kilos per yeah. bag. It's good that we got a Frenchman to do these. Mm. Yeah, omelette expert. <laughs> yeah, so now you see it's uh, all uh, mixed, all homogen. Mm -hmm. So that's what you want. Mm -hmm. uh, when you apply it, sometimes, uh, because uh, copper is very heavy, it comes down. It, it comes down, so sometimes you just uh, have to mix it a yeah. little bit. Keep mixing it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think Well, he's professional, my love. Sylvain, you come under the kilo already. What? You have done under the kilo already. Yeah. <laughs> it's a machine. Yeah, that's now we need to wait until it goes sticky to do the second layer. We got 13 kits, which is what was recommended by Copper Coat for the dimensions of our boat. And we need to do four coats of Copper Coat. Each of these bags of copper is like two kilos. They're so heavy. The boys had time for a coffee. Apparently it's pretty important to wait the right amount of time because otherwise when you go with the next layer it just wipes it off. It seems to be going on okay. Code number three.
Dessert is ready. Oh, nice. And you trace too. Oh, nice. They're just starting the last coat. Fifth coat. We started at eight. Half past seven. Okay, half past seven. And it is ten past, well, eleven past three. And they are done. Almost. Almost, yeah. Sylvanis is going over some bits with the leftover. And Stu is doing the brushing. You did that whole piece of tape in one go. Yes. Nice. And it doesn't break. Of course, it wouldn't be us if we were totally happy with the job, and we are not. <laughs> I don't know if you can appreciate it on the camera. Yeah, you can. But it's like a bit patchy. There's areas that are more orange than others, and we don't know if that could be because the copper is not evenly spread which means that maybe we should have been mixing it more often instead of just mixing it once and then put it on and also there is a lot of this I wouldn't say a lot <laughs> well enough yeah enough to not be happy. totally happy but and we haven't sanded it yet so yeah, yeah, we still need to sand, so we'll see once we sand, but there are two boats in the yard that just had it done and it just looks nothing like this one. Yeah. It's all even, there's no drops yeah. at all. Yeah, we're... Uh... We don't know what we did wrong, but you live and you learn. If anyone out there is a copper coat expert, let Keep us know... Keep your opinions to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, let us know what could have gone wrong. We're only really going to know the final results in a couple of years and once we monitor the state of the fowl growing on the underwater ship. Um, we could yeah. also, I mean we're, we're going to sand it in a couple of days, we could also throw some seawater on it yeah. <laughs> and see if it turns green, all of it, or just parts of it. I mean we did five codes. So I would think there is copper everywhere. It's just, I don't know, comparing to those other two boats, don't it doesn't look the same. But don't compare yourself to others. <laughs> yeah. And also, yeah, the drips is just annoying because they're going to be hard to sand. Uh, I think if we do it in the next couple of days, it should be acceptable. And we had done such a good job with the primer, then now. It's okay. It's all drooly. It just ran a lot, so I don't know what was 
wrong with the application. So all we can do now is just wait until we can sand it and then see how it looks. We've been like really following the instructions. The US website for Copper Code has a lot of information. They say that just wait several days to to sand it and if you wait for like a week or longer, it will be too hard. <clears throat> it would be too hard to sand. So just don't wait too long. And once it's sanded, it doesn't matter how long you wait until you go in the water because the copper is exposed and the copper is like, it doesn't go off. It will just be there and it's not a problem. Non-ferrous. Yeah, so it's not a, it doesn't matter how long you stay in the hard until you go in the water. But the sooner you sand it, the easier it is to sand. Otherwise it'll get harder and harder and yeah, apparently it's not fun. <laughs> and yeah, we'll see once we sand it. For now we just have to wait until we are able to do that. You can find these on the US site for copper coat and it just shows you how it should look when you sand it. So that's how it should look, kind of like all the same. Here it says that's not enough, you have to keep sanding. And this is what happens when there are any runs or it's not smooth enough on application. That then when you sand it you've got that area around whatever it is if it's a drop or that you can't sand which means you can't activate the copper and that is what worries us because there's a lot of drops so Stuart has just had his first go on the sander and that's exactly what happened there's all, not that many. All that area with the runs, you can't sand around the runs. Yeah, we'll get there. They will get there. But the rest is looking good. Mm. It's so shiny, it's like if it was. Well, penny. Yeah, like if it was a, a penny. It's a shiny penny. <laughs> yeah. 
pretty cool actually, but it's gonna take some time. Like all this is kind of yeah, perfect. But when we get to areas like that, that's not ideal. It says 320. <laughs> yeah, they recommend sanding it with 320, but... Some 180 would be nicer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just do what they recommend. There's the yeah. best always. Oh, yeah, no, it's just got to, you know... Take time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this is the last time you'll be sanding this hole. How do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the longest time. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my new friends. And these guys are their cousins, <laughs> and they also need attention. They need some polishing. I cleaned all the bases, and that took a long time. I don't know what they used to seal them. It wasn't Sikaflex, it was so sticky, it was like gum. And it really took a long time to clean from the deck and from the stanchions. So I think Stuart is going to be doing the polishing. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. They are all labelled. And we have 10 days until we get out of the hangar. Which I'm not really looking forward to because I love being here. But we can afford it and we need to move back on board soon so we need to go outside we also need to work on the ribs inside and keep sanding the copper coat but i don't think we'll have time to finish the copper coat sanding because there's loads to do apart from that so trying to get organized it's never fun working under pressure but we've got a date now and we need to work towards that so we'll see the copper coat is really hard to sand so we've decided we're gonna take turns one day Stuart sands copper coat and the next day is my turn and the other person just does all the jobs and today is my turn <laughs> so I'm gonna do first the areas where the pad for the cradle goes so we can put those back on and then lower the other ones to get them ready for priming and copper coating as well. And see if I can get that done, plus maybe the other half of the keel I can get done today, we'll see. It is really hard but we are hoping that it will be worth it and we don't have to sand this hole for many more years to come, we'll see. I really don't know what I'm doing here <laughs> and it's stressing me out quite a bit because once we come out of the hangar the whole deck is gonna be covering water every day most days at least 
So it's going to be tricky to do this work outside. It needs to be done now. So, yep. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going to give it a go. If I wanted to do a quick job, I would just make the cracks a bit bigger and fill them with something. But I just know that that's not going to work. Because if I do that, things like this will happen. It will end up cracking again. I think originally there were two cleats here and they covered it with filler and it didn't work. Same over here, they did a repair and they just put filler on and then the filler ended up cracking again. So I'm just gonna have to sand it off and maybe put fiberglass on. I'm basically fiberglassing all of them. Because the first time I had a look at them I could see that it wasn't just the gel coat cracked, it was also the fiberglass underneath. So it just needs repairing, otherwise it's going to happen again and again. And I just don't want to have to do this again. <laughs> Think? Uh, just be careful, two seconds stand away. Just to get there we go. Job well done. Well, I don't know if well done, but job done. It is done. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see what it's like once we've sanded it, and hopefully we'll we... only know in a few years, I suppose. Yeah, we were a bit down, as you saw, after the application of the copper coat, thinking it maybe wasn't the best job, but after sanding it, we're a bit more positive. We yeah. think it should be okay. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Mainly the longevity, we did it, we did the copper coat ideally for, for the bottom paint to last a considerable amount of years and if it doesn't, it will be annoying because it's quite a process but now that we're in the copper coat system, we'll just have to sand it and patch it up. If there's any areas that need patching up, hopefully it's okay. Mm. It does look very shiny and coppery, yeah. so I guess that's alright. Like a tuppence. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, the m most of the work on the hole is now done, which is a relief. Mm. There's been a lot of stress since we got in here to get it all done. Yeah, we've been putting in a few extra hours. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's cool. Now we move into other areas and projects, which uh, yeah, is ongoing. Yeah, it's exciting, but it's stressful, but we'll get there. No stress. Just yeah. Just sticking boxes. That's it. But yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here again this week, and hopefully see you next week. Thank you for all your support, not just with your comments, <laughs> but with also your donations through PayPal and coffee, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the super the super thanks also, and to, to all our patrons. Thank you very much. Oh, that's <laughs> cute.
Thank you very much and hopefully we get more exciting stuff for you next week and you will have a lovely week. Yep, enjoy your week. Thanks everyone that's helped and contributed to our cause. Very grateful. And next week we'll have more boat stuff to show you. Yay! Goodbye. Have a good week. <laughs>